Today we're going to be checking out the brand new plugins that have been integrated into Figma. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, Linode supplies servers that let you deploy apps, sites, and services that are both flexible and scalable. Linode's one-click apps make it easy to set up a web stack or a WordPress instance in under a minute. Simple pricing starting at $5 per month ensures there's no hidden fees or surprise bills. So sign up with the link below and use this code right here to receive a free $20 credit on your Linode account. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCetro.com. So today we are checking out Figma, specifically their new plugins. Now, I've always thought that in order for Figma to compete with Adobe XD or Experience Design, that they had to also offer plugins just like Adobe XD does. And fortunately, just a few days ago on August 1st, they gave us that ability now to have plugins. And there's already quite a few. I mean, it's, it, look, it looks like a bit under 100 so far. So if we check it out and go to browse all plugins, I, we could see that it gives us all this data about the number of stalls, the name, you can click on them, find out more specifically about what they offer. And you can see I have a few installed already and I'm going to be designing just a real simple user interface uh, and then using and harnessing the power of plugins, uh, which is a really great way for the Figma team not to have to you know, come up with all their stuff uh, on, on their own. Um, I'm gonna give you my thoughts about Adobe XD versus Figma while I'm using Figma because I am an Adobe XD user. There are some positives that Figma has over XD and vice versa, of course. All right, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started. All right, so once you log into your Figma account, we're at the main dashboard where it lists out your different projects. By the way, a lot of these aren't my projects, but I think when I did my when I do my live design reviews, it just kind of lists the ones that people sent me. Um, but anyhow, we can see this new plugins option right here. So um, what's cool is we browse all plugins and I'm not sure how many there are right now. Um, there's not a ton, but obviously that will change. It's brand new. Um, and it gives you the installs, the publisher, the name. If you click on the name, it'll actually give you a lot more detail specific to each plugin. Um, and then installing is very quick and easy. You click install and there it's installed I mean there's no wait time or anything like that um, and you can see I have a few that are installed we're going to use a chart we're going to use something called content real um, fig motion which is very interesting um, lorem ipsum of course that was one of the first things there's a search up here I was like oh they have to have a lorem ipsum option here and they do which is always handy um, and also unsplash which is by far I think their most popular uh, plugin that they have so let's go ahead you know, and by the way a lot of these I uh, you'll see um, overlap from like Adobe experience design they have these plugins as well um, it's very cool stuff so let's go ahead and let's just create a new project and just see how these various tools help us along with our workflow and I'll give my ideas um, about this particular very generalized UI design um, and also uh, differences between Adobe XD and Figma that I notice in just building out this simple example. Um, so let's go ahead and let's create uh, an artboard here. So we'll click on that's that's the one thing that's kind of interesting. Like there's a down arrow, but you click it and then you get to the artboards. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do desktop, and we'll just do 1440. Now, it's a little bit too square, in my opinion, for what I want to do. I'm going to push this up. I may change this and make it a little bit longer based on our needs. Um, one thing that's cool is we can change this background color, which is very handy. Because um, if you're using a color for your background that's similar to this, it makes it hard to see where your canvas starts and ends. Um, so I'll just give you an example of that. Let's take the desktop here. Uh, artboard and we'll change the background here and the background I'm going to use is kind of going to be um, in the blue hue and it's just going to be something like uh, more on the desaturated side with side with a little bit of color right there which is EB EFF2 for the hex color code for those of you that care and this is kind of hard to see now. It's not a good amount of contrast between the artboard itself. So I uh, select this, take the background, and then we'll change it to something that's uh, a little bit higher contrasting. 
Yeah, right around there. There. Much better now. All right. Uh, so we're just going to have a flat background, solid color, no gradient or anything like that. I'm going to take the uh, rectangle tool and we'll just kind of create like a kind of like a dashboard type of uh, UI, not specific to one purpose or a project. Uh, it's not really going to make too much sense. But again, we're just experimenting with plugins here uh, as a way to gauge how useful they are. So we're going to make this one white. All right. So we have an okay amount of contrast. I may want to take this down just a tad bit. There we go. Now we can more clearly see this container for our content. Uh, we're going to duplicate that with Control D. I have a sidebar, a left sidebar, and for this sidebar, um, what I like to do is I'll take the, this recent color that was used. This is handy down here um, just because I believe in Adobe XD you have to add your colors manually to the swatches, uh, but this kind of has like a, a, a section where these are recent colors that you used and they have them handy right there. So that, that's a plus in my opinion. Um, so we have the same color now as the background for this. And I just like to kind of go down. And I'm thinking somewhere right around here. So I'm, I'm using the least amount of contrast possible to where I think it's acceptable that it defines this sidebar. Of course, you could go a lot of different ways with this. You could go up here, which is completely fine if you want a more vibrant UI. Uh, you could go down here as long as it contrasts well and it complements with this color up here, which is in the blue. So I'm choosing just to kind of make it, yeah, I'd say right around, I'd say like here, I like that. Okay, so next up after this, by the way, I might make this a little bit, I'm holding Alt, scaling that in, there we go. All right, so now I'm just gonna put, uh, we're gonna use the type tool. Admittedly, I haven't used uh, Figma in, in quite a while, because I by default, I'm always using Adobe XD. But uh, obviously that doesn't mean that everyone has to, or I think everybody has to either. So we're gonna use Nunito for this. We'll go to bold. And for the size, the size, it would be nice if there was an option where you could just left click and drag up and it would change the value instead of coming down here. Um, you can also obviously do it over here as well, or no, you no, you can't. So this will only change the actual um, text, I guess you could call bounds instead of the text size itself. So that's a little frustrating in my opinion uh, for that. I think we're gonna go with 16 for this. All right, so we'll say quick tip right there. Again, none of this really has much meaning. The first plugin what we're gonna use for this is I just want some lorem ipsum text here, all right? Before we, we get that in there though, we're gonna make this regular and we'll make it slightly smaller. So I says, I'll say we'll go to 14. All right, that looks good. So let me zoom in here so we can see what's going on. Now, I, so here's how you use this. So first, obviously you go to plugins here, you go to manage plugins. We can see I already have it installed. So go install it. And then you don't even have to reload this page, by the way, this, I, once you install it and you switch over, it shows up automatically, which is nice. So I, we're gonna click on Lorem Ipsum and this is the little panel that I, is based on the current, currently selected plugin. Um, so you could do like five sentences. This one is very strange to me. I, it, it must be an issue with this plugin. Let's say we generate five uh, uh, sentences. And of course you have to have your, your text layer selected before you run this plugin. You hit generate. Why is it doing that? Clearly I only want it to show this amount. Now I was looking through different options here to see if like we could stop that because I only wanted to show here, um, which is the the behavior, for instance, in Adobe XD, but it's showing the full thing and I didn't know how to stop that. So we'll back up Control Z a few times and then we will right click. You can also access it by right clicking. Uh, you can choose run last plugin, which is pretty handy too. 
and then generate the perfect amount to fix to fit the text frame auto generate uh, and there it is so still that's not ideal either because what if you want to change you want more text it would be nice to have the other text there so I'm not sure about that if I'm getting this wrong if there's a way to do it the way I think it is let me know in the comments for sure okay so I think one other way that we will separate this in terms of visual hierarchy between this label and this text, so we did it with size, we went from 16 to 14, also font weight from bold to normal. You can also do it, and you don't have to, uh, but I'm choosing to do, I uh, to take our blue color here, increase the contrast rate around there would be pretty good. All right, so I'm just gonna leave the sidebar like that. I don't wanna focus on it too much, uh, I just want, different use cases for plugins. So we're gonna take this, duplicate it. We're gonna hold shift to make sure it stays on the same horizontal plane. And also I'm paying attention to where I'm putting this. So you can see uh, it's about an equal amount of white space from the top and the left here. So you have really well-defined white space or, or your padding uh, and it gives things room to breathe. See, I told you I'm going to make this uh, a multi-purpose a multi -purpose tutorial. We're going to talk about UI design as well. So over here, I think we're just going to have like three large uh, images, uh, kind of like thumbnails. And you know what? I think I want to make, I'm going to move things over just a bit. So we'll select a couple of these. We're going to make this maybe just a little bit wider. We'll pull this out. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I uh, will take this and we're gonna use uh, the Unsplash plugin, uh, which is very handy and it works well that I found. Um, before we do that though, I'm going to get this container kind of set up. So we're gonna make this white. So of course we can't see it, but one way we can see it, and before we do that, I'm gonna bring in the corners, which these work you know, very well as well. Uh, we're gonna do a drop shadow the dreaded scary drop shadow um, so we'll do effects we'll come out here and we will say for the blur now you, you can't drag with your mouse or anything but you can use your keyboard arrows we're going to make a large feathered sort of shadow and it needs to be soft like this and in fact I, I did a recent video about this new design trend that we're seeing, which is the very the, the vibrant or the colored drop shadows. So if we come out here and we change to our, our you know, in the same area, if we come over here, we can kind of get this. I kind of want it to be a little bit lighter, maybe right around there. And that way it'll really help us see this container. And it's kind of nice. It kind of comes off very subtly on the side over here as well. So it's a big old soft container <laughs> in a sense. So I'm going to duplicate this. Um, we're going to bring this one up. This one, we don't want an actual uh, drop shadow. Uh, for this one, we're going to keep the two top uh, right and left border radiuses, but we're going to get rid of them right here because I think it would look a little bit silly um, otherwise. So what we'll do... Actually, we'll do that after we use the plugin. So we're going to use the plugin here on Splash. Go ahead and install that. And you can insert random or you could search for something. Um, I'll just choose animal. Okay. So what we can do now is if we come to our border radius, we can change. I the border radius is this way. So if I just take my keyboard all the way down and this one all the way down, there we go. So now that's just the top two are working there. You know what? I don't like that image because it's it's too similar to my my current color scheme. I don't like that. Let's just go ahead and um, run another animal. That's better. Okay, so now that worked quite easily, quite well. Uh, let's get ahead. Let's go ahead and get um, another piece of text in here, some type. We'll just take these two, duplicate them. We're going to let's see here. 
Where is the send to front? Well, screw that. I'll just drag them up there. That's a quicker way. We're going to put this right here. Wow, that almost fit perfectly. I don't want this much space, though, between them. And we'll move this up. All right, so another thing um, that we'll use is an, we're going to use another plugin um, for quickly replacing texts, and it could do so through names uh, and, and other just generic information, which is pretty handy. Uh, before we do that, though, we're going to replicate this uh, a few times. So I think we're probably going to have to take everything. I'm holding Shift and selecting everything and getting this a little bit larger so that we're just going to have three. So um, when you do this, you may have to make a couple changes here. I think we'll drag this up. That's fine right there. OK, so we'll take this. We're going to right click. Uh, we'll create a component out of this. And then this is where this is one of those tools that Figma lacks that I absolutely love about Adobe Experience Design, and that is the repeat grid tool. There's no repeat grid tool, unfortunately. Um, it's not too much big of a deal when you only have three items that, items that you have to uh, repeat uh, because this, they make it real simple otherwise in terms of duplicating. Uh, and let me just show you. Uh, if we go ahead and uh, duplicate this, Control D, we can move this over. And then the next time you hit Control D, it will give you that equal amount of spacing, which is pretty nice. Um, but again, as you can see, I don't have even margins because because I tried to eyeball it. So I'm just going to move this over. There we go. So it, it still does a pretty good job with the guides, and it is it is quick and easy. So now in the next example for another plugin, I'm going to go ahead and double click into here. I'm going to hold Shift, double click into there. Uh oh, I did it too many times. Let's try this again. Double click, hold Shift, double click. Hold shift, double click. There we go. So now we have each of these three selected. Let's go ahead and right click and we'll use plugins. And I believe the one is called Content Reel that I want to use. All right, so this is pretty cool. You can put in names, you can put a phone number, US addresses, email companies, usernames. Um, it would be cool if they had some other ones outside of this. I'm not sure what people are. All right, and they also have icons, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, I think we'll go ahead. Yeah, it would be cool, to, for instance, if they had like general just, I don't know, titles. Like, I, I don't know. Let's just try names. Or they all start with R. Interesting. Um, now, right here, we're going to want to make this larger. There we go. So, yeah, very easy to use. Um, the lorem ipsum text, I'm just going to leave the same. All right. So, for the next one, let's go ahead and duplicate this. Go ahead and say stats. Let's do a chart. So this should be interesting. Now this one, we're going to need some more space here. So I'm just going to drag this down. Right around there looks good. We'll drag these two things down. Hold shift, select them both. We're going to add a chart underneath here. I know it doesn't make sense in the context of what we're doing. But again, this is just a demo. Um, what we'll do here is first get out. A rectangle something you know around the size of the chart that we want it to be maybe we'll make it go all the way out and it'll be like a scroll chart or something um, and if we right click this and we go to plugins the next plugin is chart so you can create or update a chart right here and this is pretty cool um, it has line charts area charts stack charts I'm not going to go through them all you kind of get the idea uh, vertical bar charts and what's cool is you can actually put in um, data from like uh, Google Sheets or JSON data um, number of categories I'll just say two so this will give you differently colored vertical bars or you know lines depending on what you you, you sp specify and I'll say 30 30 vertical bars going across here I uh, so you could this is kind of cool I didn't uh, notice this before but the the by default it's on random so completely random uh, trend up trim down normal distribution or mixed cool and we'll just go ahead and, and it's it's not very complex in terms of what you end up with I uh, 
you could let's see what this says select layers to create chart all right so again especially with the the colors that it's using it's quite ugly looking but we can of course fix that so if we duplicate in or double click in there we can get access to uh this right here because it's grouped them all up so we could just make this white for instance and this looks pretty large i kind of don't like that i think we need more bars so all i'll do is just back up here a couple times right click run last plugin uh, we'll go back to bar and we'll say maybe like 60 or two categories that's better all right so we'll double click into here make this white and there we go very quick and easy way to get yourself a chart visualization in your ui designs very very cool stuff all right so another plugin that we'll check out one last plugin which is quite it looks like a ton of work went into it and it, and it has good intentions but is a little bit weird and difficult to work with uh, was one called fig motion so if we duplicate this just because i want to maintain this artboard as i designed it over here if we duplicate this i uh, what we'll do is you have to select the artboard in order for this uh, plugin to work so we're going to come down here let's just plugins and use fig motion all right so let's click out of this this fig motion allows you to add animations to your individual artboards here and initially when i tried this out i thought it was like wow you know you can apply animation to a given artboard and then you can maybe use the prototype mode like for instance if somebody clicked on this i uh, it'll take him to this new artboard where i've added animation and it will show those animations right so it can kind of uh, recreate adobe xd's auto animate feature kind of uh, in, a, in a keyframe based way um and that's not the case uh, what it basically allows you to do and i'll show you i uh, is create some animations here using this keyframe timeline like in adobe after effects or any other keyframe based uh, software um, and it will render a video for you showing what that looks like and you can hand that off to developers all right so let's uh, let's give it a shot um, let's say we want to if somebody clicks this it's going to hide these two so these two will fade out and then it will expand this option so let's see how we can do this now normally i would probably make this wider on, on my dual monitor setup and then push this over but so it's kind of in our way but that's okay we're only focusing on the top two up, top three elements up here anyhow so um what we could do we have to select uh the elements first so for this one it's you can see it's a component it's listed here unfortunately if you group things up it doesn't show the groups here it's only the individual layers but if it's a component it will show you know the component itself so we'll take this we're at zero uh, frames and we want to add a keyframe for opacity all right then we'll come out maybe to half a second and we will now the order in which you do this is very important and i kind of forget at the moment uh either add a keyframe and then update it here or update it here uh the opacity that is and then i uh, add the keyframe because you can't do either way um so if i go to like zero percent now and then add the keyframe let's see if it worked no it didn't work so apparently you add the keyframe and then you can do that so let's remove this we have to go back to the beginning i guessed wrong unfortunately so we're going to go to 500 we'll add the keyframe this time and then we will put it to zero please work and look it's not working like how, why is that not working remove let's start over all right opacity we want it to start from 100 percent please god work we're gonna come out here we're gonna add the keyframe of opacity and change this to zero 
So that's really frustrating, and I'm sure maybe it's just a case of me not using this correctly. If this is the value, perhaps, I don't think that's the value. Save. Maybe that was the value. I thought you would just be able to change it here and it would update. Jesus Christ. What am I doing? Okay. So, I, uh, as you can see, not all plugins are created equally. I thought it would just be something where you set it over here. Apparently not. Um, let's go ahead and try updating this one. We'll try to make this one much smoother, smoother now that I know how to do it. So we'll come out here to 500 as well. And we will uh, give this an opacity. We'll double click it, change it to zero. Save. There we go. Very simple. Of course, you could change easing as well. Uh, the easing doesn't look very great when it's just on uh, linear like that. So if we go back here to this component, maybe do the same thing. Now we hit play. Okay, so next up we'll have this. We wanna change the width of this one and it's not gonna look great. I'm not gonna spend time trying to get everything perfectly aligned in here, but this is just for quick demonstration purposes. Maybe around 300, we'll add a width property and I'm not sure why it added there. That's fine though. Um, and then maybe at like 700, we'll change the width. So this is a tricky one. I'm not sure how I should go about doing this. We'll add another one. The width is currently 281. We want it to go out to right here, which is 933. Did it update here? No. So maybe I just have to put 933 here. Let's try to hit play. <laughs> there we go. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, now that we have it playing here, again, you, as far as I understand it, you can't use this in a prototype. It won't work. For instance, let me just show you. Uh, if we go to prototype, we drag this over. We have an on click and we have an instant into this one and we hit play. It just goes straight there. Uh, maybe if I try changing this to uh, this click event here, if I change this to, let's see here. Where, <coughs> where is, <coughs> yeah, there it is. Uh, we'll just say dissolve. <laughs> maybe we'll get to see some of the animation. I'm not, probably not. I just, I just wanna check just to be certain. Yeah, so there's no animation taking place there, unfortunately. Um, it's just here in this option. So what you can do and then is just hit render, and then uh, it gives you some information. It just stores it for one hour on their server in the format of MP4, GIF, or WebM. You hit render, it has a little um, percentage value right here. It is pretty quick, it's rendering through. And the video that it does produce actually does look pretty good uh, from what I've seen. So um, we'll go ahead and view last render. And uh, here we go. That's all it is. So it's just something you can quickly, you know, while still using Figma, if you like using Figma, uh, instead of Adobe XD, which has a far superior uh, option through auto animate, um, you can do this. Although I have to say with the keyframe based option, you do have a more flexible level of control um, than Adobe XD uh, with all the keyframes. But I, uh, again, that's that's one of those things. It's it's a trade off though because it's a, it's a, it's a it's not interactive. It's just a, a video apparently that you you send off. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Uh, the plugins here in in Figma are going to be a huge. It's definitely uh, an asset. I uh, and I think a, a necessity if they were going to try to compete with Adobe XD. So what's a great thing about the free and open market uh, and competition? It really uh, helps the, you know, the consumer in the end when they're competing with each other. That's some basic economics. 
All right, so let me know what you guys think about Figma these days. I uh, And also, do you think it's better than Adobe XD? Is it what you use? Maybe you're an Adobe XD user. Did you switch from one or the other? Or do you use something completely different? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.